does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube. I'm back again for another How to Play video. And today, I'm very excited to be teaching you how to play Pokemon Surprise Attack Game. Now, the first thing I want to mention is you can play this game either one player or two player. And there's both a junior and a master way to play the game. This video will cover all of that. Also, if you have a different version of the game with different characters, don't worry. This video will teach you how to play as well. We're going to start off, though, showing you how to play the two-player version of the game. So first thing, make sure everyone has their own Pokeball. And then make sure you set this little tracker right here all the way to the far left. This is your health tracker, and we'll talk a little bit more about it later. Now, to open your Pokeball, you're going to gently twist it all the way around, and then press the red button right here, and it will pop open like so. The next thing you're going to want to do is have each player select three of the attack discs that they would like to use for this round. If players don't have their own attack disc, then just starting with the youngest player, take turns picking one attack disc at a time until everyone has three attack discs. So let's just say that happens. Now what each player is going to do is secretly load their Pokemon into this middle spot like so. And if you only have one version of the game, then there won't be so much of a secret because they'll know which character is coming after you. But if you have numerous figures to choose from, you want to keep this secret. Likewise, each player is going to secretly load one of their discs into this spot right here. And how you do it is you kind of push it in there. You'll know it's loaded in properly when you can hear it click and you can spin the spinner like so. Next, each player is going to want to take their attack discs and put them face down so no one can tell which one you played. Close up your Pokeballs. Gently rotate them counterclockwise until they lock into place. And now you're ready to battle. Now, with both players ready, you're going to smash your red button and reveal your Pokemon. Now, sometimes, Pokemons will be a little shy. They won't want to come out. The best way to do that is not just pull up, because that won't work. You have to kind of squeeze it in the center and then pull up at the same time, kind of like an Easter egg. Also, if your Pokemon fell out of play, it's no big thing. Just pop them right back in there. Just don't touch the spinner, because when you hit this button to reveal your Pokemon, it also spins the spinner. And whatever it lands on is how you're going to duel. So let's take a look at these two. First, if it's ever on a line, just give it another spin. So when you look at the attack disc, you're going to be looking at how many symbols you see. So Jigglypuff has come up to three, and Squirtle has two. This means Jigglypuff has done three damage, so you tick down one, two, three on Squirtle. And Squirtle's attack on Jigglypuff did two damage, so they would get ticked down two spots. Now, the other major symbol we need to talk about is the cancel symbol, which you'll see quite frequently. And if anyone lands on the cancel symbol, that means that they are going to cancel out their opponent's attack. So let's just say that Squirtle was doing three damage and Jigglypuff landed on the cancel. Well, that means Squirtle's three damage would not hit Jigglypuff. And then Jigglypuff isn't going to do any damage because all they did was cancel the incoming damage. Now, at the end of this turn, if anyone's health is completely depleted, they're all the way on the far right side over here, and if you get in real close, you can see it's kind of, it looks a little bit different than all the other ticks, but if anyone gets to that point, then the other player, the one who attacked them so much that they're down there, is going to win the round automatically, and you play best two out of three rounds. However, if neither of the Pokemon's health is depleted and they still have action discs to play, then you're ready to move on to the next turn. And how you're going to do this is you actually pop out the action discs like so and set them off to the side. You will not be able to use these for the rest of the round. So set those off where you're not going to use them. And then both players are going to load in another one secretly, and they're going to do the exact same thing again. Closing your Pokeballs, rotating them both, and having another battle. Now let's pretend that you get to the point where you've just done your combat, people have taken their damage, but there's no more action discs to play inside the Pokeball. Well, that's the other way a round can end, and whoever has taken the most damage would then lose the round. But if you're tied, so let's say Squirtle had taken five damage and Jigglypuff had taken five damage, then you play one more bonus turn where you can pick any one of your action discs and play it just like a regular turn. However, Whichever character does more damage in that extra bonus turn is going to be the winner of the round. And if that turn is a tie, then you keep doing that until one Pokemon does more damage in an overtime turn than another Pokemon, at which point they have won the round. And once again, you're trying to be the player who wins the first two out of three rounds. But I want to mention a few more rules, and then we'll get into the master trainer way of playing the game. First, your Pokemon figures inside your ball stay until the end of a round, but in between rounds, you can switch out Pokemon if you have enough. 
This isn't particularly important in the junior trainer version of the game, but once we get to the master trainer version of the game, it will be. Also, if you ever want to change anything inside your Pokeball before you hit the button and reveal, you can do that. Just secretly open it back up and fix whatever you need to. But now let's talk about the master trainer rules because it's really simple to go from the junior trainer to the master trainer. The only difference is that now you're going to be taking a look at the actual type of Pokemon that you have. So Squirtle is a water type Pokemon and Jigglypuff is a fairy type Pokemon. Why this matters is that when you attack, you're actually going to do an advantage to certain types of Pokemon. And there's a chart right here in the rules, and I'll explain exactly how it works. You're going to start at the very top, and then you're going to go down. So, for instance, for Water-type Pokemons, they get one advantage over Fire-type Pokemons, over Ground-type Pokemons, and over Rock-type Pokemons. And all the different symbols are listed down here. On the flip side, we know that Jigglypuff is a fairy-type Pokemon, which is this symbol right here. So we'd start at the top, we'd go down, and we'd see that they have an advantage over Fighting Pokemon, Dragon Pokemon, and Dark Pokemon. So what this means is if you do damage to a Pokemon you have an advantage over, instead of doing whatever number you'd get, so let's say Jigglypuff would normally do two damage right now, they would actually be doing three damage to Fighting, Dragon, and Dark Pokemons, but to Squirtle, who's a Water Pokemon, it would just be the two damage. But other than that, the Master Trainer rules are the exact same game. Last but not least, let's show you how to play a one-player version of the game. And luckily, the rules for that are pretty much the exact same as the all the other rules, except instead of playing against an opponent, you'll be playing against what's called a training partner. And how this works is, at the beginning of the round, what you're going to do is pick the Pokemon you want to train against, pick out their three action discs, and then when it's time to put in one of the action discs, you do it secretly away from yourself so you can't actually see what's going in there. Then you load it up like normal, twist it like normal, and play a normal round trying to defeat your training partner or have more health left than them at the end of the three turns. The other major difference is you don't go best two out of three rounds, you only play one round and either you beat your training partner or your training partner beats you. And just like in the normal version of the game, if it happens to be a tie at the end of three turns, then do overtime rounds until either you or the training partner does more damage in an overtime round. But that is the Pokemon Surprise Attack game. If this helped you out, please consider giving this video a like. And if you love learning new games, be sure to click on that subscribe button as I do how to play videos all the time. Also in the comments below, let me know what's your favorite Pokemon of all time. I'm a big Charmander fan, but let me know what's your favorite and why. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.